Hello everyone, this is Dalster, and today I'm here at the movie theaters. I'm here to watch the new Flash movie, and I managed to get a ticket for free after what happened with the Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse movie, but I thought I'd watch this movie because I got it for free, and also see if it's good or bad. And so far, I've heard some mixed reviews about it, but I'll see what happens. Again, you know, I'm not supporting Ezra Miller. I'm not a fan of his. I'm not definitely not a fan of his but I just wanted to see it just for Michael Keaton and Supergirl. I decided to review it through voice recording again but the movie was not as bad as I had thought but it was great to see Michael Keaton as Batman again. It's been a couple days since watching this movie so I am really sorry for posting this so late. I've been taking care of personal business and have been walking a lot lately to stay healthy or at least try to be healthy. Anyways, I would recommend watching this movie if you're a huge Batman, Superman, or Flash fan since it does pay homage to the three heroes. Unless you're like against Ezra Miller which I understand I'm also not a big fan of him either right now. I'll try to summarize it as much as I can remember and share my opinion at the end of the summary. Just to warn you guys there are spoilers in this video so now is your chance to leave if you don't want to hear any spoilers. The movie starts off with Barry getting breakfast at this restaurant only to see his usual cashier that gives him his everyday order. Barry has this watch that I think tracks his metabolism or energy of some sort. I don't know much of the Flash character but I think he uses it to check on his energy in order to run fast. The lower I think it is, the less powerful he is. It reminds me of the little device people use for diabetes to check on their glucose or blood levels. He gets a call from Alfred, Batman's butler, and he asks how come the others aren't called upon since Barry hasn't had his breakfast yet. Barry speeds off to take care of a crime while Batman is chasing the criminal. The streets crumble underneath and Barry stops in what I think is a bomb from exploding down under. The hospital crumbles and the infirmary room with the babies falls down. Barry tries to save the babies, the nurse, and the dog as they fall. But lucky for Barry, food also falls down and grabs some to increase his energy. He was able to save everyone as the nurse still is screaming that the babies are falling. Really funny by the way. Not sure how and why Barry would put a baby in the microwave as he just cooked his burrito in it. The day is saved and we see Batman in Flash's time and Wonder Woman too as they get one of the criminals. Sadly the men get wrapped around the lasso of truth as we see Batman get anxious when Wonder Woman is around. Barry returns to the restaurant, gets his food, and arrives late for a work meeting. He gets lucky in not getting fired and goes outside to find his crush Iris. Iris talks to Barry as a friend about his dad being in jail. Barry's dad is in jail for allegedly murdering his wife, Barry's mom, which is not true by the way. Barry or Iris invites themselves to Barry's house for dinner later that night. Barry tries to get his home clean to let Iris in and impress her. They talk and every time Barry gets something from the fridge or drawer, we see that he puts his mess anywhere to make his apartment look cleaner on the outside. Iris talks about Barry's dad being wrongfully accused and that if only things were different back then, Barry thinks about his conversation that he had with Bruce about changing things in the past. But Bruce says it's better to not look back at it. We then see Barry run to his childhood home and calls his dad about the court date and the day Barry's mom died. Henry, Barry's dad, tells Barry that maybe it was best if he stayed in jail and not have to deal with his wife nor his death outside jail. Barry then runs fast and as he runs, we see Barry's past from today and realizes that he can go back in time while in the Speed Force. I forgot to mention but Barry got footage of his dad in the store seconds before Nora gets stabbed. You can't see Henry's face though as his face is seen downward with a hat covering it. Barry then decided to go back in time to prevent his mom's death and he, as he goes to the speed force you see a collage of Barry's past. I don't remember if the first time he ran to the past was when he saw this dark shadow speedster push him out. Barry ends up going into a different time in an alternative 2013 where Nora is still alive. As he looks around, he sees his mom Nora and dad Henry in their home and they are confused about Barry's look and hair. 
As the three are about to eat, he sees his younger 18-year-old self about to come into the house. Barry drags his younger self into the room and he tries to come up with a plan to call the Justice League but cannot locate anyone since this is a different time. Barry looks at the date and realizes that it's the day that he got his powers. The Barrys go to the police department where Barry got his powers. Current Barry, the one that we currently know and see in the beginning of this movie, manages to get himself and the 18-year-old Barry through the door. They go into a room with all these chemicals and wait until a thunderbolt strikes at the younger Barry. The Barrys argue and the thunderbolt hits both of them. The young Barry gets current Barry's powers but the current Barry's powers are gone. The Barrys go to a restaurant and on the TV they see General Zod announcing that he plans to take over the world. Current Barry realizes that this is the day that Superman beats Zod. So he and the 2013 Barry go look for Bruce or Batman at his mansion, but see an older looking Bruce with a different face. Current Barry loses one of his teeth while he and 2013 Barry were fighting Bruce. He tells Bruce that he's traveled through the Speed Force and Bruce explains to the Barrys about time traveling and how it can alter the future and the past, which I'll talk about at the end. The Barrys go to the Batcave and current Barry convinces Bruce to help them find Superman, Kalil. They go to a hidden location in Siberia and find a pod where they think that Superman might be in there. A person is in the pod that has a Superman outfit, but it's not Superman, but rather Supergirl, Kara Zorel, Superman's cousin. Kara tells the others that Superman was her cousin and that their planet Krypton was blown up. She seems to be able to absorb energy through the sun as Kara is floating on top of the mansion but decides to leave to look for Zod. Current Barry asks Bruce if he could help him strike lightning in order to gain his powers. Batman does so but Barry is injured and almost dies. Current Barry wants to try again but as Kara flies off, she sees Zod and his army. He spots her and Kara goes back to the Batman's mansion. Bruce was about to hit Barry with another lightning bolt until Kara arrives and helps Barry get thunderstruck and manages to regain his powers. The Barrys, Kara, and Bruce go fight Zod and try to save the earth from Zod taking over. Kara fights Zod and the guys fight Zod's army, but 2013 Barry does not fully know how to control his powers yet. Zod tells Kara that he thought the infant Kalel had the, this codex thing, but Kara and, had it all along. Kara asks what happened to Khalil and Zod tells her that the infant died and Kara uses her laser eyes to hit Zod along with punching him. Sadly, Zod is too powerful and stabs Kara, thus killing her. Bruce takes down a Kryptonian ship but also dies. The berries go back in time by using the speed force to help Kara and Bruce. The second time they try to save them, but it ended up with the same results. 2013 Barry decides to change the events over and over again, but it still is the same as the first two. Current Barry tries to knock some sense into 2013 Barry, but it's hopeless. We see current Barry come to terms that he had to let his mom die since it was the only way to fix the mess that Barry did. 2013 Barry is not happy about letting their mother die. However, as they are in the speed force, out comes another speedster who happens to be evil. Current Barry takes off some of the evil speedster's mask and sees a scar on his face, the same one that 2013 Barry just got from the battle with Zod. The older 2013 Barry tries to kill current Barry, but sadly 2013 Barry sacrifices himself to save current Barry and manages to make evil Barry disappear because 2013 Barry was dying. Current Barry, being the only Barry in the movie at the end, tries to fix everything and lets things be the way they were before. He disguises himself while at the market and manages to get a hug and a gives a final goodbye to his mom before she was about to die that same day. Barry goes back to his time and hurries to the court for his dad's trial. Henry was found not guilty since Barry got more evidence to help his dad's case. Iris is there and I can't remember if he or Iris asked each other out for a date in that scene. After that, Barry gets a call from Bruce and tells Bruce that he was right about changing the past and future, as it could get corrupted. As Barry sees Bruce drive to meet him, he sees a different Bruce. It's George Clooney's Bruce from Batman and Robin. 
Barry's tooth falls out again at the end of the movie, confused as he might be in a different time. In the post credit scene, we see Barry talk to Arthur. Barry's Aquaman, but Arthur is very drunk and is a totally different person. Arthur falls into a puddle and Barry decides to leave him there. There is only one credit scene, which is the scene I just talked about. I thought the movie was better than the second Shazam movie, but it's one of those movies where you have to separate the actor from the work. I don't condemn the recent actions that Ezra Miller did outside the movie, but he was good at playing Barry in this movie. I like to think that putting the baby in the microwave was Ezra's idea considering he's a very troublesome guy. It's going to be hard to recast Flash with another actor, but Warner Brothers has to, in my opinion. Just like Amber Heard. They should with Amber Heard anyway. I do like the movie's theme, which is letting go of the past and, in a way, heal your inner child. Barry, at the end, had to let go of his younger self and realize that things happen for a reason. Bruce said at the beginning of the movie that things happen for a reason, which is why he and Barry became the heroes they are in their present timeline. I do hope that DC recasts Flash because the character is interesting and important for the DC timeline, but has gotten tarnished because of Ezra's mistakes. There's so much they can do with the Flash character like they did in the Justice League cartoon, which I remember from Cartoon Network in my childhood. It was great to see Michael Keaton back as Batman. A couple months ago, I think January of this year, I started watching Batman and Batman Returns for the first time because I heard from my friend and this YouTuber named Justin Scarred about Keaton's portrayal as Batman being the best to this day. I could see why people love Michael Keaton's Batman because he was a really good fit for it. The Batman plane or whatever was really cool, luxurious, and gothic. It can also revolve, which was really helpful towards the battle scene with Zod. I think if Keaton was younger, they w probably would have had him do more Batman movies. But he is 71, and I think taking on such a big role like Batman is probably too much for someone at that age. Especially tiring. Definitely one of the best Batman, along with Christian Bale. As for Sasha Cali's Kara, she was a really good fun character who I would like to see more of. I remember seeing Sasha in Young and the Restless and liked her character in that show but was bummed when they wrote her off. I also liked that she is a brown skinned supergirl instead of the typical blonde girl we're so used to. I hope that Warner Brothers decides to keep her once James Gunn restarts the DC Universe. I myself am a brown skinned girl and in my 30s now and seeing a brown skinned girl Taking on such a big role is so inspiring, not just to me, but I bet to all the other little brown skin girls out there. In my opinion, it was the right move to put diversity in this character. I also like that they had Rudy Mancuso. I used to have a huge crush on Rudy Mancuso back then in his Vine days when he did those little videos. But he was only in this movie for like five or so minutes, not much actually. I do feel bad for 2013 young Barry as he was really cute and funny but then I realized that it's Ezra, the actor playing the character which is the complete opposite of Barry. I also like that they had Flash cover this little boy's eyes from seeing his father die from the car which tackles mental health. Other than that, I give it a 6.5 out of 10 since they basically killed all the cool fun characters like Batman, 2013 Flash, and Kara. But they're probably alive in some other world. The CGI was a little bad, especially that one scene where we only see Flash's head pop out of a hole. It was interesting to see other versions of Batman, Superman, and Flash, such as George Reeve, Christopher Reeves, Adam West, Helen Slater, and Nicolas Cage during the last part of the movie. I do agree Nicolas Cage's Superman was not great as he is older and they made his character younger with the bad muscle pack. Even the eyebrows aren't so detailed and similar to the regular actor's eyebrows. There was an actor who played classic Flash, but I forgot his name. Although I do agree with the fans who say that putting all these actors in without getting permission from them or from their families is not okay because it's kind of disrespectful to their legacy. In my opinion, I heard that George Reeve was not happy with the Superman character and sadly took his life. Warner Brothers should have asked his family if it was okay to do so to put his character in. Adam West recently passed away in 2017, although I think they should have gotten permission from his family or closest ones if they could CGI him in the movie. What do you guys think? Did you love seeing the superheroes of the past? 
I would have liked to see classic Wonder Woman or superhero cartoons if possible. I remember in the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse movie, an animated kind of cartoon movie, they, spoiler alert, inserted Andrew Garfield in the movie for a little bit along with Donald Glover who plays the Prowler in real life. DC could have done it too, but since they are rebooting the entire universe, I don't think it's necessary anymore. I hope the best for the DC universe. I may like Marvel a little more than DC, but I hope they get it rolling with DC soon. Did you guys love the movie or not watch it because of Ezra's actions? Comment down below if you want to share. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, I'm close to 200 subscribers and we'll make an exciting video to celebrate 200 subscribers. So subscribe if you want to as I'm getting close to 200 now. And thank you guys for watching, comment, like, subscribe, and see you next time. Bye guys.